again, it's me with part two of the Wyvern. And this video is basically concentrating on the wings, um, weapons, and yeah, pretty much everything else that's gonna get this ready for paint. So, wings first. So, as you can see, um, there's a lot of bits uh, for the wings, uh, and also I'm having mine um, open. Open, spread, no. Folded, that's the word, well done. Um, so, um, I don't have to go through the rigmarole of actually blending everything in when we come in with the, the wings that <clears throat> unfortunately Rob will have to explain to you on his video. But anyway, speaking of Rob, um, what he did actually mention is that uh, to glue the actual main under wing to fuselage part first and then put the upper wings on after that because basically then you can gauge and maneuver the top wings um so if i can get this right the wing to fuselage fit fits a lot better if that makes any sense whatsoever what you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things i have ever heard Hopefully the pictures will, or the video. Anyway, um, a good call on that one because, um, yes, it's a lot easier doing it that way as in the way that I'm showing you right now. Okay, so making sure, glue it on, and I secure it then, believe it or not, with some Tammy tape, just to make sure that it's not going to sort of like go anywhere or do anything stupid when I put it down. Wankers. So, the upper wings. Uh, the starboard side, when you pop it on, you're like, oh, that's rather nice. Bit of a Tammy fit going on here, I think. Yeah. And you're right, it is. Um, the fit on the starboard one is sublime, and you really don't need to do anything apart from sticking the glue on. However, the port side one, um, nothing really major, but on the trailing edge part where my thumb is there, there is a slight gap. Um, well, I want to mean slight gap. It's negotiable. You can either fill it or you don't. It's entirely up to you. But for me, I am. I am going to fill it. Anyway. So, before we can actually put on the actual top halves, we have to put the wing fold section in, so we can actually have the wing folded, believe it or not. And for this, it's just a simple case of sticking some glue on, blobbing it on, making sure it's straight, and that's it, that's all you need to do. And it is a really nice fit. There's no messing about with that. So, just securing now um, the port side wing fold section. Uh, again, it's exactly the same as the as the starboard side. Just pop it in, run some glue down it, uh, and just make sure that it's nice and straight. Um, if you have to, um, or if you need to, you can put the upper wings on uh, and make sure that uh, it is nice and straight. But I would imagine, like well, even with my eyes, the Mark One eyeball should suffice to actually get a nice straight fit without any issues. So with the upper wings, we can just simply just chuck them on, glue them in, and basically now I'm just putting some Tamiya tape around it just to make sure that the fit is nice and secure. Right, with all the wings sorted out, um, we are left again with that little gap near the trailing edge of the wing next to the fuselage, but I'll sort that out later on in the video. So just to show you, everything is secure, everything is uh, tiggity-boo. Uh, and yeah, overall, the fit of the first part of the wing section was really, really good. Now, the flap system. Um, it's not your normal flap system. Um, let's say, I don't know, a Spitfire or maybe a Hurricane. Um, this one's a bit elaborate, and what I'm doing here is just gluing on the top section um, that basically secures the flaps to the actual main fuselage. Again, more of this once we actually get the main paint stage out of the way and gluing everything on. Anyway, the tailplanes. Um, 
again these tail planes they are going to be actually on the on the kit at a bit of an odd angle um and also um depending on which one you're going to be painting um the actual uh stubs that are actually on there uh, can be left off and rob has informed me that it is a really nice fit anyway yeah gluing wings together top bottoms and yeah i'm not gonna go through absolutely everything with you but it is a simple case of make sure you clean all your bits and pieces up stick your wing fold parts in don't leave them out <clears throat> and yeah just glue everything together it's as simple as that and the fit is rather nice so with this gap at the trading edge um basically all i've done is i've put in some thin bit of plastic card um as far up as i possibly can um to actually bridge the gap between the wing and the fuselage run some glue down um, the sides um i do it on both sides so you, obviously you get a decent bond and it is a case of just wait leave and let it dry properly um glue in plastic cards for me in my experience i would leave it at least two days if not maybe three just to make sure that everything is actually dry um, because once you get the styrene or the plastic card um, glued then it does take a time to set so as you can see i have left it for quite a few days i've given it a bit of a tug and yeah um yeah i'm just basically cutting now with scalpel blade as close as i possibly can to the actual kit without actually buggering it up and yeah careful careful there you go right basically then all i do is clean it up with some maybe some sanding sticks uh, maybe go over again with the um, scalpel blade just to get the other bits and pieces off but generally that's what I've done and it has done quite a decent job so yeah happy with that but if you want to you can use your filler of your choice so with all that cleaned up um, it's just on with the horizontal stabilizers and just making sure that a you know you've glued them and they are sort of like nice and straight and secure and you do have um i don't even know what they are i don't know if they're sort of like sensors or maybe like a pitot tube thing or angle attack thing that you need to put on um but they um, go on the underside of the oh, oh, spit out lenny uh horizontal stabilizer so once that's in um leave them to dry and next thing is just basically sticking in um the smaller bits oh god the innuendos um so yeah all i'm doing is putting in the hooks for um the catapult system and just after that i'll be putting on the intakes which basically just go right where my finger is see that gap with that black sort of like shape thing you bob yeah it's in there again them intakes just pop in um glue in in not an issue so with the horizontal stabilizers um it is just a simple case of popping them in and once they're in i don't know if you remember but there was a part you needed to put in before you put the fuselage shafts together they are angled so when you pop the actual horizontal stabilizers on you should in theory get the correct angle so anyway there's the angle as you can see they are slightly raised up and yeah i'm happy with that <sighs> right so that's out of the way so it is a question of getting the weapons together and other bits um for this one i'm putting on the uh 60 pound rocket um projectiles um the thousand pounder and the jet assisted takeoff system i think that's what it's called anyway um it is a simple case of just getting the right bits gluing them in and and yeah just enjoying it um oh yeah one thing um these things the jet assisted packs they're on a bit of an angle but again trumpeter have done a really good job of this actually because the way that you glue them on gives you the correct angle so there's no sort of like buggering about and thinking oh god is it going to be right no there's none of that so just take them off the sprues clean them up and glue them together 
Okay, we're getting to the end now of all the little bits and pieces. Um, there we've got the undercarriage, um, wheels, legs, and all that kind of business. Uh, oh yeah, talking of uh, little bits, uh, the £60 rocket jobs. Yeah, I'm not going to show you that because all it is is a case of just sticking on the, the tail bits and that's it. But anyway, yeah, undercarriage, glue that together, not a problem. And yeah, oh yeah, and those are the exhausts. You can bore them out a little bit more if you want, but I'm just going to keep them as is. So, on with the uh, canopy now. So, canopies, trumpeter, they can be a bit hit and miss. Um, like any other manufacturer, but this one is rather nice. They are really clear um, and yeah, really good to work with. So with masking them then, what can you do? Well, you can buy a mask set if there is a set for this particular kit, or you can do it yourself, like I'm gonna do now. So what do you need? Well, first of all, you need the kit part, um, a sharp blade, some masking tape, come on. Yep, there you go. Tammy tape. And some more Tammy tape. As you can see, the different sizes. Yeah. And even more masking tape. Yeah. Nice one. Oh, yeah. And a cocktail stick. Bloody hell. So, basically, you get a bit of masking tape, like I am now. Going to take it off. And you just place it between, well, where the frame is where your main canopy is or the main glass it's as simple as that that's all i do now i normally do the edges first all the way around and it's a simple case of popping it on making sure that you know obviously everything is covered that needs to be covered and then with a cocktail stick i will just score um where i need it to be cut and then i cut it with a knife or with a blade now Making sure, obviously, not everyone has access to, like, brand new scalpel blades and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not going to go, you've got to get yourself, you've got to get, no. Just try and get the sharpest possible blade that you can. Um, and basically, just run it over where you need to. But use the weight of the actual blade itself. Don't sort of, like, press down, because you're more than likely to either... I don't know, go off the line and maybe damage the canopy or you could actually just slip and stab yourself in the fingers like I normally do, which is quite a regular occurrence really. But anyway, just run it down. Once you're, you're happy with what you've got, you can just take it off and hopefully you're left with what you need. So the actual main part, once I've got everything, sort of like the edges and all the rest of it, it's basically just filling in the rest of it with masking tape. Again, what I'm doing there, I'm just scoring it down, making sure that when I do come along and take it off, that I'm not going into the actual main canopy. Because once you've done that, you, 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 you're buggered, really. Um, you could try and, I don't know, file it out or do whatever. But I think, really, you are going to be losing a losing battle. So anyway, be careful when you actually do it for a number of reasons. The canopy and don't stab yourself in the fingers. Okay, well that's it then gents and ladies. Um, if there are any questions, please leave a comment below. And on the next video, we will be putting it in paint. So yeah, using paint masks as well. Yeah, so looking forward to that one. Anyway, take care and happy modeling. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it.